Giving all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Baal Shem Yahweh Shai, Baal Shem Rekakwadash. Shalom to the elect. And once again, it's another video. And I'm going to call this video, The Name of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, and His Son, Yahweh Shai, Will Be Magnified by America's Destruction. The Name of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, and His Only Begotten Son, the First Spirit Created, Yahawashai will be magnified by America's destruction. Now, you should know, if you've been watching our videos, those of you that are new to this, you should know that America is known in the Bible as Babylon the Great. Babylon means confusion. That's what America is. It's nothing but a big ball of confusion. Matter of fact, back in the, I forgot exactly what year, I think it might have been 1970, you had a group by the name of the Temptations, and they had a song called Ball of Confusion. And pretty much when you listen to that song, and when you read the lyrics of that song, pretty much what was going on back then is going on now. Okay, nothing's really changed. Now, one of the uh, statements they kept making throughout the song is um, they kept saying the chorus, Ball of Confusion. And then the singer, uh, which I believe his name was Dennis Edwards, who had replaced... Um, who had replaced uh, David Ruffin, he kept saying throughout the song, Ball of Confusion, that's, that's what the world is today. Now that song was released back in 1970, so how much more now? And we're getting to the twilight of this confusion, okay, because Yahweh Shai is coming to destroy this confusion and set up his kingdom on the planet Earth, which by default will be the kingdom of Israel. That's what we're patiently waiting for, okay? But again, sticking to the title of this video, the destruction of America will serve to magnify the name of Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. The name of Yahweh is the Heavenly Father's name, his, his, his true name, his um, proper name, if you will. And Yahweh Shai is the true name of the only begotten Son. That's his proper name. And we've done tons of videos on... on uh, that subject, the true name of the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son. And that's according to the ancient Hebrew language, also known as Lashuan Kodash, which we as, that are servants of Yahweh Bashim Yahshai, we're supposed to magnify those names. So every chance we get, especially we had uh, Great Millstone, GMS, every chance we get, we magnify those names. We talk about those names, we praise those names, we enlighten the congregation to those names, especially those of you that are new to this thing of ours, okay? So pretty much I was inspired to do this video by watching the the uh, elders slash bishops, uh, Bishop Sakran and Bishop Natazakba of the main camp. And uh, they're going on live right now. They're about to go off the air. Uh, their channel is Jacob Barak 2. Well, that's actually the channel of uh, Bishop uh, Natazakba, okay? Um, that's actually his channel, I, I do believe. So, you know, they're covering a lot of topics and I was sitting there watching it and I was inspired to do this video. Hopefully it's edifying to you, brothers and sisters. And if you found it to be edifying, please leave a comment in the comment section because we don't do these videos for, for entertainment purposes. We do these videos for enlightenment purposes, for you to be enlightened and one of the uh, main things you should be enlightened to is the true name of the Heavenly Father and His Son. Because that's extremely important. Okay? All right, so let's get into it, man. Um, the, the name of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, beginning with that name, and then Yahweh Shai is going to be magnified in America's destruction. Absolutely. Because one of the reasons why the Heavenly Father is going to destroy America there's many reasons, but one of the main reasons is to magnify his name because it's going to be a great destruction. And the two things that's going to destroy this place is the, the nuclear missiles, which is spoken about in the Holy Scriptures as prophecy, and the chariots of the Lord, which is also spoken about as prophecy. Those two agents right there will serve to turn this place, America, into a lake of fire. Okay? So let's get into it. Uh, let me start with the scripture. The Lord alone shall be exalted. Let me get that first. 
okay. The Lord alone. <laughs> and the name of Yahweh Shai will be magnified too. Okay. The name of the Father and the Son will both be magnified in America's destruction. This is the book of Isaiah 2. 2 and... Excuse me. The book of Isaiah 2 and 10. It says, Enter into... Let's start at the 10th verse. Enter into the rock and hide thee in the dust. Because that's a metaphor for where this place is heading. So that you understand... Because you got other Israelites teaching different, in particular, Bishop Nathaniel. You listen to him, you think the whole world is damn near going to be destroyed. The two main places, and even Elder Pastor has said this, the two main places that's going to be destroyed is America and Israel. Now, unlike America, Israel is going to be rebuilt. Our kingdom is going to be, the headquarters is, is on the planet Earth is going to be located in the land of Israel. As a matter of fact, I'm in the same book, Isaiah, the 14th chapter, because Yahweh Shai is going to take us back to the land of Israel, because that's our land. So Israel is going to be rebuilt by our enemies, but America is going to be left a desert, 100% desert. And, and again, in the same book, Isaiah, the 34th chapter goes into that, the future of America, which is to be 100% desert after the fire dies down, that is. Okay. So in Isaiah 14 and 1, it says, For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob. Jacob represents Israel. Jacob's name was changed to Israel. So the Heavenly Father, now the Lord there that you see there, that's Yahweh. That's the Heavenly Father, Yahweh. He will have mercy on Jacob, because remember, he was the same power who banished us away because of our wickedness. So through Yahweh Shai dying on the cross, the Lord now will have mercy on us. Okay, beginning with the elect. You know, the, the first steps of, of the Lord showing us mercy was bringing us back to this knowledge, this truth, which has been hidden to the majority of the world. That's an example of mercy. Okay, so it says, For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel. You see that? That's a future prophecy. This prophecy hasn't happened yet. All right, especially the next part. And set them in their own land. What's our own land? The land of Israel. So the two places that's going to be uh, totally destroyed is America and Israel. But unlike America, Israel is going to be rebuilt. The land is going to be rebuilt. It's going to be cleansed and rebuilt. Unlike America, America is going to remain a desert because America is going to be assigned to, uh, uh, to all the nations what happens to a kingdom that is totally wicked, okay? such as America is, all right? So, and by the way, the destruction of America will be a major dent to the power of the Edomites, which rule this whole world. That will be a major blow to them, which they will not recover from. And beginning with the top banking families of the Edomites, which are going to survive the destruction, many of them don't even live in America, all right? Many of them live in different parts around the world. They're going to be rounded up and be brought into captivity, slavery, underneath us Israelites. Okay, and the scripture for that is Psalm, the 149th chapter, to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron. That's going to happen after the destruction, after the total destruction of this place called America. Okay, by the nuclear missiles and the chariots of the Lord, which both, like I said earlier, is going to bring fire to this place. Okay, what I'm sharing with you is the future. And this is the future according to Bible prophecy, which the prophet saw many years ago and wrote it down. Okay, and now we know what it means. When we read these scriptures through the Holy Spirit of Yahweh Shemi Shai, which has given us understanding, now we know what it means. Now we can see into the future. All right, so it says, For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land. So we're going back to our own land, which is the land of Israel. And the stranger shall be joined with them. That's the other, the, you know, the Israelite foreigners. And they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. Right. So we're going to be one nation, 12 tribes. Okay. So I need not read anymore. That's pretty much what I wanted. We're going to go back to the land of Israel. So this is proof 
that the land of Israel, yes, is going to be destroyed, but it's going to be rebuilt, unlike America. Now, another scripture that comes to mind, just came to my mind, is the prophecy in Isaiah, the 54th chapter. Isaiah is a very heavy book. You know, there's a lot of prophecies in Isaiah which hasn't even happened yet. And then you got these Israelites talking about, oh, we don't believe in the Old Testament. We only believe in the New Testament. You still have prophecies in the Old Testament that hasn't happened yet. And you, you have uh, uh, writings in, in the New Testament that refer back to the Old Testament, which shows you that this book, it's one book. The Old and New Testament goes hand in hand. So those of you that believe the Old Testament is void and the New Testament is, is, is what's still standing, you err not knowing the scriptures. Okay, you err not knowing the scriptures. You make, you make a major mistake not knowing the scriptures. The book of Matthew 13 and 52. Let me read that to you real quick. Because the Old Testament is just as valid as the New Testament. And I'm saying this for those of you who have that belief that the Old Testament is null, null and void. There's still prophecies in the Old Testament that hasn't even happened yet. Okay, Matthew 13 and 52. Then said he unto them, Therefore every scribe which is instructed unto the kingdom of heaven, and that's us in this knowledge is truth, we are likened unto the scribes being instructed into this knowledge, the knowledge of, of these scriptures, right? It says every scribe which is instructed unto the kingdom of heaven is like a man that is an householder, which bringeth forth, who's that man? That's a metaphor for the Heavenly Father, Yahweh. Because we get this knowledge, this understanding from Him. We get it from the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, through Yahweh Shai. Remember, Yahweh Shai made a statement. He said, I am the doorway to the Heavenly Father. So this knowledge comes from the Heavenly Father Himself, Yahweh, through His Son, Yahweh Shai. Remember what Yahweh Shai told His mother at the age of 12. Didn't you know I came to do my father's business? What is His father's business? This knowledge, this truth, which we're receiving. So it comes from the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, and we get it through Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai is the conduit. All right? So it says, Every scribe, so that's us, which is instructed unto the kingdom of heaven, is likened unto a man that is in householder, that's the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, which he gave this treasure unto his son, Yahweh Shai, which bringeth forth out of his treasure, that's this knowledge, this truth, Romans 11 and 33. It speaks about the, the as a matter of fact, let me get that for you real quick. So I don't butcher that scripture this is to show you that this knowledge this truth is indeed a treasure and it's not given to every israelite it's certainly not given to everyone hell it's not given to every israelite it's only given to the elect this is it right here romans eleven thirty three. Oh, the depth of the riches both of the wisdom and knowledge of the heavenly father so this indeed is the real treasure how unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out that's why it's a treasure because not too many people have it. Not too many people understand it. Now, you notice it says the wisdom and knowledge of the Heavenly Father. That comes out of the Old and New Testament. Not just the New Testament or not just the Old Testament. You got certain Israelites, they only believe in the Old Testament. They don't believe in the New Testament. You got certain Israelites, they only believe in the New Testament. They don't believe in the Old Testament. They're both lost. Those two books go hand in hand. So we, this is what we're about to read here. Matthew 13 and 52, then said he unto, unto them, therefore every scribe which is instructed unto the kingdom of heaven is, likened, is like unto a man that is in household. I already explained that to you. Which bringeth forth out of his treasure things new and old, as in the New Testament, the Old Testament. See that? And if you well adverse, if you're well adept in the scriptures, you would know the old goes together with the new. Like I said, there, there are certain prophecies that haven't even happened yet in the Old Testament. Furthermore, when the Lord was on the scene, what scriptures did he refer to? He referred to the books of the prophets, which is found in the Old Testament. That was the basis of his teaching. All right. So anyone who says that they only believe in the New Testament, they don't believe in the Old Testament, they err not knowing the scriptures. That is the point. So now let's go. For, I was going to further prove to you that the land of Israel is going to be rebuilt, unlike America. America is going to remain a desert. One scripture comes to mind is Isaiah the 34th chapter, which, by the way, that hasn't been fulfilled yet. Okay? Uh, Isaiah 54 and 1. It says, Sing, O barren, that uh, thou that didst not bear. 
break forth into singing. As it stands right now, the Heavenly Father consider, considers the land of Israel to be bare, to be a barren wasteland. Because it's not, the land of Israel is supposed to be the Garden of Eden. All right, Eden is, is uh, from a Hebrew word, Aidan, which means paradise, uh, which really means the earth. The earth is supposed to be a paradise. And the garden is the land of Israel, in particular Jerusalem, which is the greatest city on the planet earth. That's going to be the headquarters, the, the, the center. All right. Um, but right now it's in a barren state because the Edomites are ruling over it. In particular, you have a family called the Rothschild family. All right, the, what you have over there in Israel today is, which is called a state, not even a nation. The Bible speaks about a nation of Israel, not a state. There's a big difference between a nation and a state. Okay, so back in 1948, this is why we call it the 1948ers. A state of Israel was created by the Rothschilds. You can you can Google this. You can find this history. The Rothschild state of Israel is not what the Bible is talking about, as in the, the return glory to the land of Israel. Okay, let me say that one more time so it makes sense to you. The Rothschild state that we have of Israel right now is not the fulfillment of the glorious Israel that the Bible is talking about. Okay, which is found in scriptures like Isaiah, the second chapter. Okay, that's going to be destroyed. That Rothschild state of Israel is going to be destroyed by Yahweh Shai and be replaced with the real Israelites. This is why we're going to go back to um, Isaiah, the 14th chapter. Because, for instance, the Rothschilds, they're not Israelites. They are Edomites, and they know this, okay? But they're ruling right now. They're ruling over there in the state of Israel. So, back to Isaiah 54, it says, Sing, O barren. And that's one of the reasons why the land of Israel is barren. Okay, when we, when the true Israelites come back to the land of Israel, the whole land is going to be beautified. The whole land is going to be like the kingdom of heaven on, on earth. Okay, nothing like what it is now. Okay, when they created that state in 1948, it was a joke. Okay, because the very night that they created it, May the 14th, 1948, when it was announced Israel is now a state, that very night war broke out between the Egyptians all right, and uh, uh, again, the prophecy says in Isaiah, the second chapter, when the true nation of Israel is established, the nation will, learn, will not learn war anymore. There will be no such thing as war. So what happened in, in May 14, 1948? It didn't fulfill the prophecy, the future prophecy of the true nation of Israel. It did not fulfill it. And that's how we know that that state over there is a joke, Okay. So again, so the day is coming when Israel will be rebuilt, will be glorified like it was in the past. In the past, it was the, the Garden of Eden, and it will be that again. Okay? It says, Sing, O barren, thou that didst not bear, break forth into singing and cry aloud. This is after the destruction. Thou that didst not travail with child, for more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married wife, saith the Lord. Enlarge thy place of thy tent. And again, the, the land of Israel will be cleansed and it will be enlarged. Okay? That's what it's saying here. Enlarge the place of thy tent and let them stretch forth the curtains of thine habitations. Spare not, lengthen thy cords and strengthen thy stakes. Okay? Uh, as a matter of fact, let's read that in the NLT. Enlarge your house, because our real house, like you have the saying, the house of Israel, our real house is the land of Israel. So after the destruction, after Israel is destroyed, it's going to be rebuilt, and it's going to be better, bigger and better than before, okay? This is what we're set to inherit. Enlarge your house, build an addition, <laughs> look at that, spread out, so the land is going to be enlarged. Spread out your home and spare no expense. Yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna be <laughs> we're gonna be living in a in a, in a land that's gonna be uh, made totally beautiful, okay, in every way shape possible. All right, for thou shalt break forth on the right hand and on the left. Right, because uh, again, the, the the scriptures speak about the seed of the nation of Israel is so great that they cannot be numbered. 
So it makes sense that our land will be enlarging. Okay, because we're going to have a lot of children. Um, there, there's a there's a scripture where it speaks about a little one in Israel will have will bring forth a thousand. That's just a number. Imagine that a, a, a average man in the nation of Israel will have over a thousand children. So we're going to need a lot of land to to uh, to, um, you know, to give to our, our seed, our, our offspring. Furthermore, um, not just uh, the planet Earth. Us Israelites are going to inhabit and rule over. Yahweh I talked about uh, in his father's house of many mansions. That's in the book of John, the 14th chapter. So what is that? That's a metaphor for the other planets. So we're going to inhabit them too. And that's part of uh, enlarging, like it says here, enlarge the place of thy tent. You can bring that in there too. The fact that we're going to dwell on other planets, which is one of Esau's dreams. One of Esau's dreams was to to dwell and colonize other planets, this is proven by the by the by the uh, the television the television show Star Trek, which Star Trek means Star Journey. Trek means journey, and that was created by Gene Roddenberry, the original one. Gene Roddenberry was a member of the Wicked Elite. Okay, so reading on, it says, "For thou shalt break forth." on the right hand and on the left. So it was going to be an explosion of Israelites right after the destruction. All right. Something you call a baby boom, the baby boomers. We're going to be the real baby boomers. <laughs> a lot of babies are going to be born right after the destruction of this place called America and Israel. And unlike America, Israel is going to be rebuilt. Okay. For thou shalt break forth on the right hand and on the left. And thy seed shall inherit the Gentiles, right, as slaves. Jeremiah 30 and 16 goes into that. And make the desolate cities to be inhabited. See that? So that's talking about the land of Israel. The whole land is going to be made beautiful. Okay, so I believe they just went off the air. Brought the bishops. Uh, so back to Isaiah 14 and 1, it says, For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land. You see that? So the land of Israel, which is going to be enlarged. We just read the prophecy in Isaiah 54. And the strangers shall be joined with them. And I already explained that to you. That's the other tribes. And they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. Right. We're going to be one nation again. Twelve tribes. So let's go to um, uh, Isaiah, the second chapter, I believe it is. The Lord alone. So the destruction in keeping in harmony with the uh, title of the of this video, this lesson, the destruction of America will serve to magnify the name of the Heavenly Father. OK, so this is one of the reasons why he's going to bring the destruction to magnify his name. And his name is Yahweh. That name, Yahweh and Yahweh Shai will be magnified all over the world. You know, all these other different titles that many people call the Heavenly Father and His Son by, all of those titles are going to be destroyed, man. They're going to pale in comparison to the true name of Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. Those two names are going to be magnified. And that's part of our creed. That's part of our belief. And we, we will witness it. We will see it. Isaiah 2 and 10, it says, Enter into the rock and hide thee in the dust. This is after the destruction or while the destruction, rather while the destruction is happening. OK, for fear of the Lord. Right. For fear of the Lord, because the Lord is the one that's going to bring that destruction. OK, the destruction by the nuclear missiles and the chariots of the Lord. OK, and the two places that's going to be destroyed is America and Israel. But unlike America, Israel is going to be rebuilt. OK, so it says enter into the world and hide thee in the dust for fear of the Lord. That's that destruction. And for the glory of his majesty. And we're going to witness the glory of his majesty. Part of the glory of the Lord's majesty is to see that destruction is going to be so great. Okay? It's going to be so great. Matter of fact, let me give you an example of that. Let's go to Zephaniah, where it speaks about the great day of the Lord. Another prophecy in the Old Testament that hasn't happened yet. Okay? Zephaniah, the first chapter, we get a, we get a glimpse of what that destruction is going to be, how great it's going to be. Zephaniah 1 and 14, the great day of the Lord is near. See that? It is near and hasteth greatly. Right, we're in the twilight moments of it. All right, 
the, the major, like Elder Pastor always says, the major prophecy that, that, that has to happen before that destruction comes is the mandatory implantation of that chip. The prophecy in uh, uh, Revelation 13 and 16, where it speaks about he caused it for all both small and great to receive that mark in their right hand or in their forehead. That mark is that RFID chip, which has been in the news more and more every day. You know, they're talking about the brain chips and they're talking about the chips they want to put in people. Matter of fact, we know, according to the conversation of uh, Aaron Russo, with uh, which he disclosed to... Uh, Alex Jones, if you don't know who Aaron Russo is, you should Google him. He's a Hollywood movie producer. He had a friend from the, you know, the Rock, uh, the Rock, Rockefeller ilk, which the Rockefellers are nothing but Rothschilds anyway. I had found some research where uh, the Rothschilds, when they came over to America, they changed their name. Some of them changed their name to Rockefeller because this is what they do. Anyway, uh, you had this character, Nick Rockefeller, who was supposedly friends with Aaron Russo. And um, they wanted to bring Aaron Russo into the, one of their secret society clubs, one of those clubs being um, the CFR, Council on Foreign Relations, right? As Aaron Russo tells the story, he passed away from cancer, supposedly. Anyway, he disclosed to Alex Jones that they, they as in the top banking families, as in the Rothschilds, Rockefellers, they want everyone chipped. That's what Nick Rockefeller told Aaron Russo. He said, look, we want everyone chipped. He also told Aaron Russo about 9-11 a good 10 years before it happened, almost 10 years before it happened. Okay, it's quite an interesting and funny story how, how um, Aaron Russo tells it. Okay, so we know, based upon that information, we know what the top banking elite want. They want everyone chipped. And that's where we, we see in the news, that's where it's going, that's where it's heading. Everything is becoming digital, and that's what those chips are, the, the RFID chips. Uh, your money will become dig digitalized. Your, your money, and Aaron Russo also, also talked about that. He talked about credits and debits. You know, the money system will become credits and debits, and we see that happening now. The paper dollar is about to be done away with because the credits and debits of that chip is the ultimate form of control. And, that, and we know that's what Esau wants. Esau wants the ultimate form of control because they got a God complex. Ezekiel, the 28th chapter, okay? So that prophecy, and that takes us back to Revelation 13, 16, that prophecy has to happen first before the total destruction comes. So this takes us back to Zephaniah 1 and 14. So we're talking about the total destruction, which is going to serve, is going to set the stage to magnify the name of the Heavenly Father and His Son, just like the total destruction of Pharaoh and his army in Egypt, which is where I'm drawing the inspiration from. The total destruction of Pharaoh and his army in Egypt, in the, the, the Red Sea, you know, the Gulf of Suez, the, mo the most northern part of the Red Sea, that served to magnify the name of the Heavenly Father at that time, Yahweh. And the, the thing is, the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, told Moses that when I bring this destruction upon Pharaoh and his army, it's going to serve to magnify my name. And as a matter of fact, that's one of the reasons why I'm doing it. He told Moses that, the Heavenly Father. He said, look, one of the reasons why I'm doing that destruction upon Pharaoh and his army is to magnify my name. Because at that time, his name, Yahweh, was not well known. He was, he was better known as Alashadia, the, the terrible demon-like power. But his proper name, Yahweh, which he shared with Moses, that name was not well known back then. Okay, So after the destruction of Pharaoh and his army in the Red Sea, all the surrounding nations heard about it. And they heard about the name that did it, that name being Yahweh. And that's proven by the book of Joshua, where you had the, uh, the uh, harlot um, uh, Rahab, which was a Canaanite. Okay, so we're, we're going to cover that. You know, I'm kind of jumping ahead, but, you know, th these are topics I've already discussed and gone into. Okay, but back to Zephaniah 1 and 14. The great day of the Lord is near, it is near and hasteth greatly. Even the voice of the day of the Lord the mighty man shall cry there bitterly. Yeah, because, uh, you know, you, this is World War III. And right along with World War III, you're going to have the angels of the Lord that's coming with Yahweh Shai. Okay, Yahweh Shai is not the only one coming. The, the Yahweh Shai and the angels. Michael, pursuant to the prophecy in Daniel, the 12th chapter, Michael the archangel will be coming with the Lord to, to wage war against the Edomites. The main nation that the Lord is coming to 
basically kicked their ass is the Edomites. Isaiah, the 63rd chapter. Who are the Edomites today? That's the so-called white man, beginning with the top banking families. They're the ones in rulership right now. This is their kingdom. Okay, so Daniel 12 and 1, look, look at the subheading. The time of the end, right? And at that time, Michael, and at that time shall Michael stand up. Who is this Michael? Michael the archangel. He's one of the archangels. All right, there's four that we know of. Uriel, Raphael, Gabriel, and Michael. Okay, so it says, And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince, which is really an angel, which standeth for the children of thy people. Who is that? The Israelites. The children of the Lord's people are the Israelites. Always have, always will be. Okay, so even Michael the archangel is coming to defend us Israelites, beginning with the elect. All right, so... Uh, the great prince which standeth against the children of thy people, and there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time. Now, now that trouble is going uh, is going to escalate when Yahushua comes and invades this planet Earth with his, with his army of angels in those so-called UFOs, in those chariots. They're coming to bring trouble. At the same time, Yahushua is coming to bring salvation to the elect, but trouble to the Edomites. Okay, so that's why it says there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. And at that time, thy people shall be delivered. Who is that? The elect of the nation of Israel. Be delivered by who? Yahweh Shai. That's why the name Yahweh Shai is ancient Hebrew, for he is the deliverer. Matthew 24 and 30, he's going to deliver his elect. And at the same time, that great deliverance right, is going to serve to magnify the name of the Heavenly Father and His Son, because the whole world will see this. They'll see the destruction, and they'll see the great deliverance that's going to be done by the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son. They'll see both, and that both those, those examples will serve to magnify, truly magnify the true name of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, and His Son, Yahweh Shai. Absolutely. There's no doubt about that, especially in my mind. There's no doubt about that. Those two names will be magnified, and we will bear witness to that. We will see that, okay? It says, because, look, the Heavenly Father only has one name. You know, there's Israelites that believe he has many names. No, he has one name. He only shared one name with Moses, and that's the same name that he has today. Remember, he don't change. If we go into Zechariah 14 and 9, right, if we read Zechariah 14 and 9, it says this, it says, look at the subheading, God will be king over all. Now, many people call him God, know him as God, but that's not his name. His true name, his personal name is Yahweh, which means he is, he exists, he is, he is to be. Yahweh, that's his true name. That's the name he gave to Moses. So it says, Zechariah 14 and 9, and the Lord, now if we were to go into the Hebrew, and I'm doing this for basically those of you that are new. If we were to look up this term, Lord, you will find the true name of the Heavenly Father. It is right there. Okay, some people call it the, the tetra, Tetragrammaton, but that is his true name. Yahawaha. When you put it together, it's Yahweh. Yahweh. So, when we read this, and the Lord, Yahweh, shall be king over all the earth. Right, and this is again, once again, after the destruction. And that destruction is going to serve to magnify the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, because all the nations are going to want to know who brought such a great destruction, who brought that time of trouble as the earth has never seen. We just read it in Daniel 12 chapter. They're going to know it's Yahweh because his name is going to be magnified, especially through his prophets, his apostles, his prophets, his teachers, okay, which we magnify, well, not magnify, but we're glorifying the name right now. Okay, we're telling you about the name, the true name of the Heavenly Father and the Son. It says, And the Lord shall be king over all the earth. In that day shall there be one Lord, see that? And his name one, which in, in, which truly the Heavenly Father is, the, the, he's that one Lord. But his, his only begotten Son, right? His only begotten Son is going to rule in tandem with him. His only begotten Son is the mediator. Okay, because you have Israelites say, look, why do you worship, uh, the, you know, why do you worship this Yahweh Shai? There's only one power. There's only one Lord. Yeah, there's only one supreme being. That's the Heavenly Father, Yahweh. There's only one ancient, another title for Yahweh is Ancient of Days. There's only one, yes. But 
he made his only begotten son. He gave him the position of, um, of, of uh, uh, taking over, okay, so to speak. And I want to phrase the right word there, taking over. As a matter of fact, um, let me prove that to you, okay? Let's read that quickly in the NLT, Zechariah 14 and 9. And the, Lord shall, and the Lord will be king over all the earth. And that day, on, on that day, there will be one Lord, and his name alone will be worshipped, right? Which is Yahweh, right? But will the name Yahweh Shai also be worshipped? Well, let's find out. Let's find out. Let's go to Philippians. Philippians. And you might say, well, you go into the New Testament. Why don't you prove it in the Old Testament? Okay, okay. Let's go to, um, let's go to, uh, what's the scripture I was just thinking about? Um, let's go to Psalms. That's a good one. Psalms, the second chapter. And you're going to see it's the heavenly father and his only begotten son. Because the, the, here's the proof. Psalm 2. And um, you know what? I may have to start at the first verse. Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? What, what are they raging? What are they, what are they imagining? That they're going to rule this planet Earth perpetually, especially the Edomites in what they call a new world order. What is the new world order all about? Where the Edomites and all the other nations are going to rule together as one with the Edomites on top and everybody else, their slaves, complete with a chip inside of them. That's what they're raging about. That's the, that's the vain thing. Why is it a vain thing? Because when Yahweh Shai comes, that, the idea of the new world order is going to be destroyed. And, and you see the symbol of the new world order on the back of the $1 bill, with the pyramid with the all C9. Many people don't even... Here it is 2024. Many people cannot correctly identify that symbol and, in, and, in, uh, and interpret it, break it down. Okay? New order of the ages. So that's what they're imagining. All right, the Edomites, the, the uh, Ishmaelites, all right, the Moabites, the Ammonites, okay? Uh, let's read. It says, the kings of the earth set themselves, see that? And the rulers take together, the rulers take counsel together. What is it called? The New World Order. That's what it's called. Against the Lord, and the New World Order is against the Lord. The New World Order is against the Heavenly Father, His only begotten Son. Okay, the New World Order is the order of wickedness, not righteousness. Now, in 2 Peter 3 and 10, it says this planet Earth will be brought back to righteousness, okay? Not wickedness, all right? Matter of fact, let's quickly go there, prove that point real quick, because it all ties in, all right? 2 Peter 3 and uh, 3 and, let's see, 3 and 10. Look at the subheading, a new heaven and earth. You see that? But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. Again, we keep going back to the day of the Lord, which is destruction. Destruction and salvation at the same time. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise. That's those missiles. And the elements shall melt with fervent heat, destroying two places, America and Israel. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Again, that's a metaphor, not the whole earth, because Ecclesiastes 1 and 4 says the earth abideth forever. It's parts of the earth, America and Israel. But unlike America, Israel is going to be rebuilt. I keep saying it, okay? Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be in all holy conversation and righteousness, looking for and hasten unto the coming of the day of the Lord. That's what we're patiently waiting for. Wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved. There you go. And the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Right, America and Israel. But unlike America, Israel is going to be rebuilt. Isaiah 54, Isaiah the uh, second chapter, and other scriptures that prove this. Read on, it says, Nevertheless, we according to his promise, here's the point, we according to his promise, now you can find that promise. Peter took that from the, the book of Isaiah, the 65th chapter, where the Lord said, The new heavens and the new earth will I create. Now that word new in the Greek is kainos, which means refresh. It's the same heavens, the same earth, but it's going to be refreshed. A new rulership, a new management, if you will. Because the management that we have right now, taking care of the earth, stinks. That's the Edomites. So they're going to be replaced. Okay? So it says, nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. See that? So that's what Yahweh is going to bring. Not the nations imagining a vain thing. 
You're not going to bring a new order of righteousness. The new world order is not a new order of righteousness. It's, a, it's, a, it's that same old order of wickedness. Okay, complete with having everyone chipped, which is wickedness in itself. So this is why it is written, it's a vain thing because it's not going to come to fruition. The top banking families and their hopes of chipping everybody is not going to come to fruition. Okay, it says the kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together. That's your new world order. They have these secret meetings. Okay, during various times of the year. They have these secret meetings where they, they talk about how they're going to rule the planet Earth, right? So <laughs> reading on, it says, the kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord. So the new world order is against the Lord, all right? And against his anointed saying, his anointed is who? The, the nation of Israel, beginning with the elect. This is what they say, right? Let us break their bands asunder let it, and cast away their cords from us. That's the law, statutes, and commandments of the Heavenly Father. Right? He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. Who is that? The Heavenly Father, Yahweh. All right? He's going to laugh. He's going to laugh at them. Why? The Lord shall have them in derision. Right? They should have been had that New World Order set up. But they're in a state of derision. You got the old faction of the New World Order fighting against the new faction. So it's not gelling like Esau wants it to. And by the time Esau get it where it's halfway, where it seems like he's going to conquer the whole world, that's when Yahweh Shai is going to lower the boom on him with those missiles, and Yahweh Shai is going to invade his so-called new world order and bring destruction. Okay, this is what I'm reading here. Then shall he speak unto them, who's the he? The heavenly father Yahweh. He's going to speak unto them in his wrath, that's those nuclear missiles, the destruction, and the chariots of the Lord. And vex them in his sore displeasure. There, there's your example of it. Now, here it comes. This is the proof because we read previously, we read the Lord alone is going to be exalted in that day, right? So someone will say, well, see, that, that destroys your, your, your son, the only begotten son of uh, theory reading, um, ruling right along with the Lord. Well, how do you explain this? This is the Heavenly Father speaking. Psalm 2 and 6. Yet have I set my king. This is the Heavenly Father. Yahweh speaking. He said he set his king upon my holy hill of Zion. Who's that? The king of kings and the Lord of lords. Who's that? Yahweh Shai. Okay, Yahweh Shai is that king that he's talking about. And right underneath him is King David. Okay, all right. So let's read. It says, I will declare the decree. The Lord, okay, who's this Lord here? The heavenly father, Yahweh, okay, have said unto me, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. Now, one of Yahweh Shai's titles is the only begotten son of the Heavenly Father. So this is proof that the Heavenly Father Yahweh and Yahweh Shai will rule in tandem in this next coming kingdom. Okay, this, there's, the, there's your proof. And this is from, and I'm sure there's, not sure, but there's many other scriptures I could prove, I could pull to prove this. But the first one that came to my mind is, is uh, the book of Psalm, the second chapter. It says, I will declare the decree, the Lord, that notice this word Lord is all in caps, capital letters. That's the Heavenly Father, Yahweh himself, speaking. The, the same, another example is the, the, when you had the transfiguration and the voice that came out the chariot, that was the Most High's voice, Yahweh. He said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased, hear ye him. Then you had the vision of Stephen, the prophet, who was stoned. He looked up in the heavens, he saw the heavenly father Yahweh sitting on his throne, and who was standing to his right? There you go, Yahweh Shai. So this is even more proof. So it says, I will declare the decree. The Lord hath said unto me, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. Okay? So, so what does that mean? Meaning Yahweh Shai is going to rule in tandem with Yahweh. All right? So the, the, that destruction, man, that's coming will serve not only to magnify the name of Yahweh like it did back then during the time of Egypt, but this time it's going to magnify the name of Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. Okay? And we'll, be, we'll bear witness to that, man. So this is beautiful. It says, I will declare the decree the Lord hath said unto me, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance. Right! Yahweh Shai is going to inherit all these other nations as slaves. Okay, Yahweh Shai, let me say that one more time. Yahweh Shai, when he comes with that great army of his, the army of angels, Michael, the, the archangel being one of them, he's going to inhabit, or he's going to inherit, rather, 
all the other nations as slaves. Now, the scriptures tell us, the Apostle Paul told us that we're going to be joint heirs with Yahweh Shai. So whatever he inherits, we're going to inherit the same thing. So we're going to have the other nations as our slaves because Yahweh Shai is going to have the other nations as his slaves. Okay? So this is what is meant by, ask of me and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance. Who's given who? The heavenly father Yahweh has given it to his only begotten son, the very first spirit created, which is Yahweh Shai. And those two are going to rule in tandem, man. Okay? And right underneath Yahweh Shai is going to be King David. Okay? Ask of me and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance and the uttermost parts of, thy, of the earth for thy possession. See that? So this is talking about Yahweh Shai. He's going to inherit that from his father, Yahweh. Matter of fact, Yahweh Shai always talked about, uh, about his kingdom that he's going to inherit from his father, which is Yahweh. So yeah, Yahweh Shai is going to be ruling in tandem with Yahweh Shai. Now, do you know you got certain Israelites that don't believe that? Okay, well, that just means they're not part of the elect. Anyway, it says, Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron, thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Be wise now, therefore, O ye kings, be instructed, ye judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and trembling. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Now listen to this. Kiss the son. It ain't talking about the heavenly father. It ain't talking about the heavenly father. It's talking about the son of the heavenly father. Right? The only begotten son. His name is Yahweh Shai. That's his true name. And that name is going to be magnified. Kiss the son, lest he be angry and ye perish from the way. Because the son is getting ready to inherit a great inheritance. When his wrath is kindled but a little, blessed are all they that put their trust in him. In who? The only begotten son of the heavenly father, which is the, the image of our salvation. Absolutely. Okay? And he's only uh, coming to deliver the elect anyway. Not any Israelite can believe in him. All right. See? So let me go back to Zechariah 14 and 9. So when you read the scripture like this, where it says, The Lord alone shall be exalted in that day, it's the heavenly Father Yahweh and his only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai. Both those names are going to be exalted. Okay? If you go to Philippians now, now we can go to Philippians to. Uh, back that up what i read in um in psalm the second chapter now i want to go to philippians this time in the new testament and uh let's read about uh the sacrifice that yahweh Shai did on the cross which 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 netted him his position which is to be at the right hand side of the heavenly father in 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 the uh, in in the uh, spirit world okay and the prophet stephan saw this all right, so let's read Philippians 2 and 8. And being found in fashion as a man, talking about Yahweh Shai, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death. Yes, he was, he was put to death on that cross. And after three days, going into the fourth day, he was risen, according to Bible prophecy, according to the word of the Heavenly Father by the prophets, he was risen beginning the fourth day. All right, after spending three days and three nights in the grave, or in the tomb rather. And became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Absolutely. Wherefore the heavenly father, so because he did that, he endured that. Wherefore the heavenly father also have highly exalted him. You see that? Oh yeah, he have highly exalted him. What was the proof of that? He's sitting, at, sitting or standing at the right side of the heavenly father. Again, Stephen. Stephen, uh, uh, he um, confirmed that in his vision. And we can read it, okay? Uh, what is that? X 7. Let's read it. It's going to the latter verses. This is right before he gave up the spirit, Stephen. All right. Here's the confirmation. This is under Stephen, or Stephen being put to death. When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart. Those, the, those were the wicked Jews that Stephen was cutting through the scriptures. By the way, Stephen went through the whole history, man. Going all the way back to Abraham. Uh, Stephen was a bad dude, man. All right, he, 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 uh, he recited the whole history right there and then in his oration. He gave a powerful oration. And guess who was present? Saul at that time was present. Okay? Anyway... When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart 
and they gnashed on him with their teeth. Yeah, they growled at him. But he being full of the Holy Spirit, so he was full of the Holy Spirit. That's why he was able to go through that history like it was nothing. Looked up steadfastly into heaven. Now this is as he's being stoned. And saw the glory of the Heavenly Father. There's the subject, the glory of the Heavenly Father. And Yahweh Shai standing on the right hand of the Heavenly Father. So it ain't just the Heavenly Father being exalted in that day. It's the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son being exalted. Here's Yahweh Shai standing at the right hand of the Heavenly Father. And Stephen sees this and said, Behold, I see the heavens open. See? And the Son of the Heavenly Father standing on the right hand of the Heavenly Father. You see that? <laughs> so, so there it is. I, I don't have to read anymore. All right. So, um, so now we understand Philippians, the second chapter. You, now you understand the ninth verse. Wherefore, the heavenly father also have highly exalted him. What's an example of that? He's standing or sitting at the right hand of the heavenly father. There is no higher position. Okay. We can go in the book of Revelation, the fourth, going into the fifth chapter. It speaks about how Yahweh was exalted in the heavens. All right. In particular, the 24 elders which is part of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh's council, exalted Yahweh Shai, man. He said, he, he said to, they said to Yahweh Shai, you, you were worthy. Uh, as a matter of fact, let me just go to it. Revelation, the fifth chapter. Because it's an easy read. Revelation, the fifth chapter. Um, this is where Yahweh Shai took he took the book which represents the Bible from the one that sat on the throne. That was the Heavenly Father, Yahweh. Because like I said, Yahweh Shai's gospel came from the Heavenly Father, Yahweh. It wasn't, it wasn't, Yahweh Shai's gospel wasn't his own gospel. Okay, let's start at the, the seventh verse, Revelation 5 and 7. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat on upon the throne. Again, that's Yahweh. And the he is Yahweh Shai. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts, those are the angels, and four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb. That's another title for Yahweh Shai. This is in the heavens. And who's seen this? The Apostle John, the island of Patmos. And he's being told to write down what he sees in the vision. All right. The 24 elders, the 24 angels fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of the saints. The saints that way on the planet Earth praying. Those prayers, those prayers go to the heavens. They're taken by the angels. So this is what the Apostle John is seeing, okay? And I guarantee you the, those prayers were for the deliverance of our nation, to deliver our nation. Even now, every time we pray, you know, us, us Israelites beginning, you know, men like Elder Pastor and down, us here, GMS, Great Millstone, and the other, uh, those that are right, that is, the other Israelite groups, especially our affiliates, even when we pray, our prayers go before the heavens, go before Yahweh Shai. Okay, so this is what we're reading here. So it says, the lamb, right? Uh, the 24 elders fell down before the lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which is a metaphor for the prayers, which are the prayers of the saints, the saints being Israelites. And they sung a new song saying, thou art worthy to take the book. Who is this? Yahweh Shai. You're worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou was slain and has redeemed us to the heavenly father by thy blood, out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. So you see what Yahweh Shai's death did for us, us Israelites, and has made us unto our power kings and priests, right? We've been reconciled back to the Heavenly Father who once banished us away because of our wickedness. So through the death and resurrection of Yahweh Shai, now we're friends with the Heavenly Father again. All right, and that's really going to be seen in the kingdom of heaven, man. And has made us unto our power kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. You see that? Reign as what? As Hebrew Israelites in the land of Israel and ruling the whole world in righteousness. After Esau's kingdom is destroyed. You can't get around that. So going back to Psalms, or rather Philippians. Okay, Philippians 2 and 9. Wherefore the heavenly father also have highly exalted him. We just read that in Revelation 5th chapter. Because of what he did, Yahweh Shai, and given him a name which is above every name. And that same name is going to be magnified. Just like the name of the Father is going to be magnified, the name of the Son also is going to be magnified through the destruction of America, the destruction of Esau's kingdom, through those nuclear missiles and the chariots of the Lord. That's, that's the title of this video. 
that at the name of Yahawashai, you see that? Every knee should bow. Now, it does say Jesus there, but we know his name is not Jesus. That's an easy, that can be proven easily. First of all, the letter J didn't come about till 1524. Okay, that's number one. Number two, if, if, you, if you go back to the Greek, which this was originally written, actually in the Hebrew and then Greek, if you go back to the Greek, the word there wouldn't be Jesus. The word there would have been Iesus. That's the correct Greek pronunciation, Iesus. Now, the problem is Yahushua was not Greek. Yahushua was Hebrew. He was a Hebrew Israelite, not a, not a Greek. He was a Hebrew Israelite, Hebrews 7 and 14. So, the, so the, the point is, what is his name in the ancient Hebrew tongue? Matter of fact, the angel Gabriel spoke Hebrew that was sent to Joseph and Mary. Joseph and Mary spoke Hebrew. So when the angel Gabriel instructed Joseph and Mary what to name their firstborn son, what language did the angel Gabriel spoke to Joseph and Mary? There you go, the Hebrew. So that name would have had to have been in the Hebrew, and it couldn't have been, it couldn't have been Jesus. It's impossible. So that's why we... Uh, gloss over that word Jesus and put the right name that should be there, which is Yahweh Shai. So this is proof that Yahweh Shai's name is going to be exalted the same way with the Heavenly Father Yahweh, through that destruction, okay, that at the name of Yahweh Shai, every knee should bow of uh, things in heaven, and that happened. And when you go in the uh, Revelation, the fifth chapter, we read about the, the 24 elders, the angels, the, how they bowed before Yahweh Shai said, thou art worthy to take the book, et cetera, et cetera. You just read that. So that's going to happen on the planet Earth. After the destruction, every knee is going to bow before Yahweh Shai, especially us Israelites, beginning with the elect. So it says that at the name of Yahweh Shai, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Yahweh Shai is Lord to the glory of the of Yahweh the Father. That's what Yahweh the Father wants. So you Israelites, I got a problem with Yahweh Shai. All right, you got a problem with Yahweh Shai. You don't want to accept Yahweh Shai, right? What are you going to do on that day? You're going to be forced to bow. Because even even now as I speak, I'm thinking of this crackpot that every now and then he comes on my channel and he tries to totally dismiss Yahweh Shai or the concept of Yahweh Shai. Yeah, Yahweh Shai is the only begotten Son of the Heavenly Father, the first Spirit created. And just like the Heavenly Father, Yahweh will be magnified his name in the destruction, so will Yahweh Shai. And I just proved it to you, Philippians, the second chapter. Even in the book of uh, Psalms, the second chapter. The Old and New Testament. You see how they go hand in hand, like I told you earlier? You see? So pretty much, that's where I'm going to end it, right there. The names, the name of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, and the Son, Yahweh Shai, those names are going to be magnified by the destruction of of uh, this place called America, Babylon the Great, the total destruction, man, which is going to be done by fire, by the nuclear missiles and the chariots. So hopefully you were edified. If you was, drop a line in the comment section. I'll see you in the next one.